So if you've been around F1 for a little while, you'll probably know who Hermann Tilker is. And if you don't know who the middle-aged German man on your screen is, well, now you do. He, along with his team of engineers and architects, have designed every new F1 track since 1999, excluding Mugello, Portimao and La Salle as they were more exceptional circumstances. For this video, we'll be looking at his circuits from Malaysia in 1999 to Sochi in 2014. I know I said Tilka 2000 style, but Tilka 1999 to 2014 inclusive doesn't quite roll off the tongue. I'll also be leaving out Valencia, Singapore and Baku as there's a certain limitation to building street tracks, these things called buildings and streets, although F1's latest circuits just figured they'd build them from scratch too, and the reason Jeddah and Miami aren't in this video is because, well, they'll probably end up being their own one. Hey guys, it's Taran and welcome to the On Track channel where today we'll be designing an F1 track, Tilka 2000 style. Before we get going, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy and click the subscribe button for more F1 content. It really helps the channel out and is much appreciated. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a location for our new track, and when it comes to deciding, there are many things to consider, but we can probably narrow it down to two main ones, money and money. Okay, the local market and interest does matter, but not as much as money. No money, no circuit. I know I joke, but in all seriousness, Yas Marina cost approximately $1.3 billion to build. Once we have the country, we need the land itself, and for deciding that, there's a general rule of thumb. Elevation change is good, and flat ground is bad. But given this is a Tilka track, we're going to find a generally flat space, and if that's not available, we can always just build that too. So now we have some land for our racetrack, and when creating the track, we'll need to include straights and corners so that the track can provide good racing. To begin the track, we'll design the track's most important feature, the buildings. Now we're going to need a couple of these that serve different purposes. Firstly, the grandstands will need shading, and the main rule here, extravagance, as seen in Malaysia and China. Next up is the pit building. To be really Tilka, this needs to be big and shiny, with bonus points awarded for going over the track. The best example for this is China, which ticks every box. That's the essentials out the way, but if you really want to show off how much money you have, not naming names, you're going to need a few extras. The first is an observation tower, as seen at Bahrain and Abu Dhabi, and the Circuit of the Americas. But if you're still not satisfied, bring out the big guns with a flashy hotel. And remember, bonus points awarded for going over the track. So let's put those on our flat piece of land, and we're off to a pretty good start. Now we have the important things out of the way, we can start on the actual track layout. And where else to start but the start-finish straight? Put simply, a straight line will do for this one. But as seen in China, Turkey, Abu Dhabi and Kota, this shouldn't be the longest straight. As if it's too long, we might get some overtakes and those need to be saved for special occasions. So we'll add our start-finish straight to our track map and carry on. Next up is arguably the most important corner on the track, Turn 1. Here we need to see overtakes and action, plus on the first lap there's likely to be incidents, especially when Valtteri Bottas is involved. And using the Tilka handbook for how to create overtakes, the method is simple. Straight plus hard braking zone. Once turn 1 is out of the way, Tilka has a pretty surefire method for turn 2. All you need is for the track to switch back on itself. Pretty simple. Doesn't matter if you go left or right, just make sure you do the opposite to turn 1. And when it comes to the specifics, there's a couple of options. We have the hard braking sharp versions seen in Bahrain, Kota and Russia. Then there are the more curvy options of Malaysia and China, with Turkey kind of being a middle ground. Let's add that into our track and we'll add another hard braking zone for turn 3. So the next element is something seen on pretty much every Tilka track, except Sochi, although you can debate how much of a racetrack that is as well, that implies there's some racing. These are some of the best drivers in the world and the key to Mazepin, so they need something that will push them and the car to the limits, or sometimes over them. And the Tilka method for this is a couple of fast but not flat out corners, as seen in Malaysia, China, Bahrain and kind of in turns 2 and 3 at Abu Dhabi. These turns also have the added bonus of being tricky to follow the car ahead, given how much turbulent air the cars throw off, though we can hope and pray that the 2022 regulation changes partly solves that issue. But anyway, we'll add in these turns and that just about rounds out Sector 1. Now going into Sector 2, to keep with the Tilka theme, we're going to need some turns that just exist. Kind of like if Antonio Giovinazzi's F1 career was a corner, like yeah they're there and they're turns, but not too special and not overly exciting. Sorry Gio. And the easiest way to do this is with a medium speed double corner, seen in Malaysia, China, Turkey and India. Just get your car in third, fourth or fifth gear, turn and that's about it. Nothing too special. For our track we'll add a double left and that's a nice start to the sector. Now the next element is a big one, both figuratively and literally. It's kind of like if Tilka had a track fingerprint in the shape of corners, this would be it. First seen in Turkey, it's a long, 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 very long, long corner. Long. You get it. It's actually a real fun corner, the idea being to get the cars right on the edge of grip. If you push a little too hard, you'll lose the car, but don't push hard enough and you'll lose time. The first iteration in Turkey worked perfectly, forcing cars to find the optimum speed, but not so quick that it's flat out. 
However, revisiting the track in 2020 and 2021, that's less of the case. Easy, easy track. Ice boring. Given the concept is pretty solid, the corner became a must-have in a Tilka track, with a right-handed clone brought in for India and an Observation Tower version at the Circuit of the Americas, followed up by a not very good version in Sochi, which is only fitting if you think about it. Given our track doesn't have any room to the left, we'll add one to the right, plus it needs some more Giovinazzi corners, so an extra double left will do. Now we're about halfway through, and there's only really one more specific Tilka turn we need to cover. Believe it or not, it's actually a good one, at least in my opinion. A turn that tightens up on entry, forcing drivers to turn and brake simultaneously while avoiding locking up, which can be fairly tricky. Seen most notably in Malaysia, Bahrain and Kota, as well as a more angled and not quite as good version in Abu Dhabi. So while being a fairly common element to Tilka tracks, they do tend to be a nice touch and worthy of a spot on our circuit. If there's room to make it an uphill corner like Malaysia or a downhill version like Bahrain, that's better but given our land is flat, or more realistically because my artistic skills stop at two dimensions, we'll keep ours basic. Now, pretty much all tracks, Tilka or not, will have a back straight section. I mean, even Monaco has one with the cars flat out through the tunnel. You'd think a straight is pretty simple, and while most people would be content with, well, a straight, Tilka has his own way of doing it. First off, pairs. No, not those pairs. Pairs. Back to back straights are pretty in fashion and a common theme throughout his portfolio, present in Malaysia, China, Abu Dhabi, Korea and India as well as three in a row in Bahrain. And to add an extra touch of Tilka, we can make our straights, well, bent. Curve the whole thing like in Kota, add a kink midway through like Turkey or randomly move to the left for no reason like in Abu Dhabi. We'll add those straights into our track and all that's left are some typical Tilka style Sector 3 turns. I mean, how bad can they be? Well, if Sochi and Abu Dhabi are anything to go by, pretty bad. Both have a string of pretty boring, bland and mostly right angled corners, they're slow and just keep on going, one after the other. Not to mention that if the basic corner shapes weren't already bad enough, a number are off camber, which only makes them slower and even harder to follow the cars ahead, which, now that I've mentioned it, is the main problem with these corners. A car will close up to the one ahead, look like they might try an overtake, then get to one of these sections. The nature of the turns means the dirty air thrown off by cars ahead make it very hard to follow, and because of that when they do get to overtaking zones they're too far back to make a move. The turns generally have one line through them, and the chance of an overtaking these sections is slim to none, which rounds down to none. So to summarise, they completely ruin any flow a track has, make it hard for cars to follow, and infuriate the F1 community, which is why we'll be using it for our final sector to round out the track. In summary, there's the not overly long start finish straight, hard braking turn 1 that switches back for turn 2, another hard braking zone for turn 3 before a pair of fast but not flat out corners, next up a medium speed double left before the signature turkey turn 8 another set of Giovinazzi turns, and then one that tightens up. Back to back long straights, making sure to do something different with one of them. A couple more hard braking zones before the right angled, slow and tedious final section. And there you have it, a Tilka 2000 style circuit, made up of all the elements that create his signature style. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, along with any feedback and suggestions. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more F1 related content. So until next time, take care.